Hello, Grade 11s, and welcome to this series on intermolecular forces. In a previous topic, you learned about covalent bonding, as well as the factors that determine the shape of the molecule and whether or not it is polar or nonpolar. As a reminder about these concepts of the covalent bond, let's join Nelly as she revises this. Let's examine the covalent bonds formed between diatomic molecules. The simplest of these molecules is the hydrogen molecule. If you draw a Lewis diagram, you will notice that each of the hydrogen atoms has a single electron. They each require one electron to have a filled first energy level. If hydrogen bonded ionically, one hydrogen atom would lose an electron to become positively charged, and the other hydrogen atom would gain one electron to become negatively charged. The electrostatic forces between these charged regions would then hold the hydrogen atoms together. Using this model, you would predict that the hydrogen molecule would have one end positively charged and the other end negatively charged. A molecule of this sort is called a dipole or polar molecule, but there is no evidence for this. The electrons in the hydrogen molecule are shared equally between the atoms. To represent the bond, we draw the shared pair of electrons between the hydrogen atoms. The shared pair of electrons is held in position by electrostatic forces of attraction between the two positive nuclei and the shared pair of electrons. These forces are equal in magnitude but act in opposite directions. So overall, the molecule is electrostatically neutral. A neutral molecule like this is called a nonpolar molecule. In an oxygen molecule and a nitrogen molecule, more than one pair of electrons is shared between the atoms. Let's have a look at the covalent bonds formed in the molecules. Look at the Lewis diagram of oxygen here. In each oxygen molecule, there are six valence electrons present. They share two pairs of electrons to have a filled outer energy level. Because two pairs of electrons are shared, we say that this is a double covalent bond. The Lewis diagram of the nitrogen shows that the nitrogen molecule has three bonding pairs of electrons. This is a triple covalent bond. A polar bond is a bond in which there is a separation of charge between one end and the other. In other words, in which one end is slightly positive and the other slightly negative. The hydrogen chloride molecule shown here is an example of a molecule with a polar bond. The higher electronegativity of chlorine compared to that of hydrogen means that the shared electron pair is found closer to the chlorine atom than the hydrogen atom. The result is that the chlorine side of the molecule is slightly negative and the hydrogen side of the molecule is slightly positive. A nonpolar bond is a bond in which the electrons are shared equally between the atoms and there is no positive or negative side to the molecule. The electronegativity of the two hydrogen atoms is the same, as one atom is not more electronegative than the other. This hydrogen molecule is an example of a molecule with a nonpolar bond. There is an equal distribution of charge. Both sides of the molecule are the same, so the molecule as a whole is nonpolar. A covalent bond is called an intramolecular force, as it describes the bond within the molecule between the atoms. In this topic, we will study intermolecular forces. To clarify the difference between an intermolecular force and an intramolecular force, look at this diagram of some water molecules. The red dots represent oxygen atoms and the blue dots represent hydrogen atoms. The red lines show that each water molecule is held together by covalent bonds. These are intramolecular forces. The green dotted lines show the intermolecular forces that attract one water molecule to another, and it is these intermolecular forces that we will study in this topic. 
These are the forces of attraction between molecules. Something must attract fully formed molecules to one another. Otherwise, water molecules would not stay together like in this glass. Here we see a comparison of the two types of forces, those inside a molecule, cold bonds, and those between molecules. We have dealt with the existence of polar and nonpolar molecules. The polarity of a molecule determines what type of intermolecular forces exist between molecules. The type of intermolecular forces that attract the molecules to one another is determined by the type of bonding that occurs, as well as the shape of the molecule and whether it is polar or nonpolar molecule. In this series, we will study these factors along with the different intermolecular forces that exist. That's all for today, grade 11s. Join me in the next lesson when we will investigate the first type of intermolecular forces. Have a look at the task video for this series and the other lessons at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Until then, goodbye.